With talk of Royal Rumble returns and more, this is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. With Ric Flair previously taking issue with Becky Lynch's nickname, The Man, he noted that he apologized to her saying on his podcast, It started out with me and Hunter talking for about an hour, which is a private discussion, but resolving a lot of issues that have been lingering for a couple of years. And then I apologized to Becky Lynch. I walked up to her and said, May I speak with you for a minute? And I said, I'm sorry that this got to where it is. I went over and shook Seth Rollins' hand and I said, I'm going to apologize to your wife. I've just decided that, you know, it all comes with the documentary. Sometimes you get so wrapped up in things that you just forget and you say it so many times for so many years. Actually, the whole The Man trademark was decided by someone besides she and I. It's not that as much as the money that was involved in it, which the company reaps the better part of it anyway. Then I saw them with their child and I thought, my god, this is going to be Ashley someday. It's not worth it. I am not the man anymore. The man is who the people think it is. And basically, we've turned it over to social media to decide who the man is. Flair also said this about his appearance on Raw 30. It was phenomenal. I gotta tell you, I learned more about myself and more about what I've missed in the business and what I hadn't missed in one day because I haven't been here for a long time. I felt like I was respected. I felt like I was wanted. I felt like I was part of it again. I walked away a better man with a better understanding of who I am as a person and what the business is about. Speaking about the reaction to her return to WWE, Charlotte Flair told the New York Post, I was very overwhelmed. For me to get overwhelmed out there, I'm usually controlling the emotions and the pace and where I'm at. I was just like, I never had that comeback moment. I never had that feel-good moment. Maybe when I won at WrestleMania 32, but it wasn't a surprise. It was a big moment in my career, but no one's ever missed me. I'm always there. Charlotte also talked about her absence from WWE and getting married to Andrade. Usually I'm thinking, even if I do go to the beach while I'm working, I could go for a Tuesday win. Wednesday, Thursday, but I'm thinking, what am I doing on TV Friday? Where are my live events? To completely be disconnected and in the moment was so nice, and getting that one-on-one -on -one time with Manny that I never have had before, it was priceless. Talk about a possible sale for WWE, Charlotte Flair said to the New York Post as a performer, It's just my job to go to work, show up, do my best, and make creative, proud, and entertain the fans. So I really don't think about it. And two, if say a sale was to happen, that takes months, so I don't actively think about it. That doesn't change what I do or what I have done. Speaking about her role in Total Divas, Brie Bella revealed that she had heat backstage in WWE, saying on the Bella's podcast, I'm so grateful for the first season cast because it was really scary. I'll never forget when we were almost done filming the first season and Russ, executive producer, was like, I really wish this pilot goes through. I was like, pilot? What do you mean? He told me the show was not sure to be picked up and I was like, wait, I'm so confused. Please don't tell me we got all of this heat backstage for no reason. He was for real. I'll never forget when it aired and we were pretty much next to neck with the Kardashians. We became this instant hit, and I was so grateful for all of you for putting your lives out there, for dealing with the backstage drama of everyone hating on all of us for filming. Also, when it aired, we knew we were going to be everyone's punching bag, with people either loving or hating it. Through the whole drama, we all had smiles on our faces and kept filming, making amazing television, breaking barriers for women's wrestling globally, and opening doors for women in wrestling. And all that for not a lot of money. I always tell everyone that I'm so grateful for all the women of Total Divas because we put up with so much and still made amazing TV. When it comes to the writer for the trial of Sami Zayn segment on Raw, Steve Carey of Ringside News wrote, The trial of Sami Zayn drew some big attention with fans. In addition to our report about how WWE's creative process operates, we're also told Zach Hyatt was the writer for that big bloodline segment.
Talking about the original intentions behind Sami Zayn joining the bloodline, Dave Meltzer revealed on Wrestling Observer Radio, studying the ratings makes it obvious that Sami Zayn is the guy. Cody can wait, maybe he can wrestle him later at WrestleMania or SummerSlam against Sami Zayn, or you know there's a million ways to get to Cody and at some point they should get to Cody too. Right now, to me, it's Sami Zayn's time. Right now, again, it's weird because the goal, you know, the goal from the Roman Reigns standpoint all along was to make Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn into to stars into bigger stars that's actually worked but you know the original plan what i can say and obviously the original plan was not Sami Zayn. and even as late as a couple of weeks ago they were trying to figure out something that's not Sami Zayn. sometimes it gets handed to you they kept going with it they did something for three weeks it kept working they extended it it was working it was handed to them it was not their plan it was not the original plan for roman reigns Sami Zayn, at wrestlemania the plan was not Sami Zayn becomes a superstar they saw that it clicked and decided to go with it. Let's make him a star this season. On Insight with Chris Van Vliet, former WWE star John Morrison talked about Logan Paul's run in pro wrestling. Remember when he had that match and he said he blew out his knee, all three ligaments, ACL, PCL, MCL, and come to find out like just kind of a sore knee. Man, poor guy. A lot of people are acting like he's God's gift. And if he wanted to have, I've had close to 4,000 matches and I've torn both knees for real. Like no MCL, partially torn, scope, 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 partial ACL. If he wants to stay in this business, and do it for real, why doesn't he talk about wrestling then? During that same interview, Morrison would hint at a return to WWE saying, I have a ton of unfinished business. Unfinished business with the frenemy, The Miz, and a ton of people on the roster. It would be great to go back to WWE. It would be great to go to any one of those rosters because there is a ton of unfinished business, a ton of new matchups, and mostly because I like wrestling. With Ring of Honor star Jay Briscoe losing his life in a car accident, family friend Josh Wharton would address those that have been attacking the driver of the other vehicle who also lost their life. It's been a tough week for our community, but also has been heartwarming to see the outpouring of love towards the Pew family during this tragedy. Once again, Jameen touched so many lives across the world, and that has been evident by the daily tributes, comments, and love we've all witnessed. The girls are still progressing as God continues to hear all of your prayers. Unfortunately, this has not been the case for the other family as there have been numerous rumors and information out there which has led to attacking and degrading comments on social media that the family has seen. Her children will read these at some point. Jameen, Ashley, the Pew family, myself, and Casey do not stand for this. In a time of tragedy, pointing fingers does not reverse what has been done. The driver of the other vehicle has two young children and we should be showing the same love and compassion for them as we have done for the Pews. Be reminded that their world has also been turned up upside down undeservingly. There is a huge hole left in their family. I am sincerely asking that everyone stop with the negative comments and feelings towards them. Let me remind you all that none of us, and I know myself better than anyone, have things we are not proud of. We all struggle with something. To judge an entire life by the outcome of this tragedy is not who we are. Only love can conquer hate. Instead of expressing harsh feelings, pray for them. Taking to Twitter yesterday to reveal she is injured and will be out of action, NXT star Nikita Lyons wrote, ACL and meniscus are torn. This comeback is personal. Thank you to all who consistently show love and genuine support. It means the world to me. Those of you who don't see the vision, thank you too. Stay right there. This is just another lesson life needed to teach. Love. Talk about their future as FTR's AEW contracts are set to expire in April. Dax Harwood noted how a return to WWE might not happen due to Vince McMahon being back as the chairman. We talk about what I'm going to do in the future, and now I'm thinking about that. With him back at the helm makes things a little questionable for me.
Speaking about a potential return to WWE for the upcoming Royal Rumble event, Rob Van Dam told 10 Count, it's happened before. You know, when I left way back in 2006 or 7. I guess it was 6. But yeah, hey, that'd be cool. I got no plans to share with you. All I can say is, I'm feeling awesome. Often, I think the answer to the question when people are like, man, how come so-and-so hasn't contacted you? It's very possible. And if you watched my documentary, Icons from WWE, whenever I talk about that, I always say, I think they got my story pretty good. I was really proud of what they told about me, not really wanting it enough. And really, that is a setback if you want a bunch of hungry people that are willing to prove how hungry they are. And then you got someone that's comfortable, not hungry, cool to be here, you know, could take it or leave it. All good. Balanced. You don't have anything to hang over my head and hurt me with or use as leverage. That's me. Staying on the topic of the Royal Rumble, one star might not make it due to a nose injury, as Dave Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio. Natty is hurt. I don't know if she'll be ready by the Royal Rumble. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later.